Are you tired of boring keychains and wish yours could be as unique as you are? Let's turn this blank webbing into something amazing. In just a few steps, we'll create a stunning wristlet keychain that's perfect for you. Stick around to see the transition. Hey everyone, it's Lean from ColoradoLean.com. Welcome back to the craft room. Today we're starting with a blank piece of webbing and jumping over to Canva to create a custom design. Let's get started. All right, now that we are in Canva on my iPad, I want to create a design. I will come down to custom size. My units will be in inches. And I am going to make an 11 inch wide by 1.1 inch tall design. Now I know there are probably multiple ways that you can do this, but this is what I have found works for me. All right, so now that I have duplicated this page a few times, I'm going to highlight the first one, come over to Uploads, and I'm going to choose this green and gold marble pattern, and I'm just going to click on it. And now I'm going to drag it out to fit my design. Now I could very easily just leave it like this and it would be beautiful, but I'm going to go ahead and drag the picture larger and then I have room to move it to find an area of the picture that I really like. And I think I like this one with shades of light and dark. So now what I want to do is find a color from this picture for the back of the keychain. So I've clicked on the page two and I'm going to come up and choose background color from the menu. And on the desktop version of Canva, if you come up to add a new color, you have an option to choose a, an eyedropper so that you can choose a color from an image. Um, I don't know why that's not showing on the iPad, but I can still choose a different color. So down here, you'll notice that there are photo colors. So they have chosen a few different colors from the picture. And I think I'm going to go ahead and choose that shade of green. I think that'll be pretty. Now let's go ahead and do another picture. Um, I have an image down here that I really like. And again, I'm going to drag this out. Now this one I am just going to leave in the center because I really like that swirl. And again, I'm going to click on page four, come up to background color. And I'm going to have this nice rich brown color. So I'm going to go ahead and speed through doing two more designs and I'll be right back with you. Now, for this one here, um, I like to call this my st fruit stripe gum pattern. If you know, you know. And you'll notice over here in the color palette that I only have room for three pictures or three photos. So I'm just going to go ahead and click all. And then my fourth picture will be available. All right. 
so I have four designs and I'm going to go ahead and share these well I will download these and I am going to print all of the front pages what I'm calling them on one piece of a sub sublimation paper and I am printing all of the back pages the backs of the keychains I will print those on another piece of a sub sublimation paper and I'll be back with you in just a moment and we'll start sublimating our keychains okay here are the printed designs I ran this through my Epson SureColor F170 sublimation printer on a sub sublimation paper and I did print this through Word. So let's set this aside for a moment and let's talk about our webbing. I picked up this printable polyester webbing from Country Brook Designs on Amazon. Um, I have seen lots of people use this particular webbing so I'm excited to see how it turns out. Um, it is a really smooth finish on it so that should make our designs pop. <laughs> okay that was not easy to do <laughs> but it did hold the webbing in place. So like I was saying it has a very smooth texture on both sides. It is one inch wide which will make perfect keychains. Um, the ends do fray so I have my uh, little scripto flame here so we'll be very careful with that because you know flames and I don't get along well. Um, I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to cut this. I have um, a rotary trimmer from Fiskars. I have my Tim Holtz scissors and I also have a little uh, ruler for the for the rotary trimmer. So let's try that first. Um, I want to cut this at 11 inches because that is how long my paper is. Okay, that wasn't too bad. And now I just need to seal the ends. So I'll just run this over really fast. I think that worked. I do have my ceiling fan on, so that's not helping any. Well, we'll see how that works. So I am cutting these at 11 inches and then they will fold over and that'll be a really nice size. Um, for the closures, I'm going to start, or for the, I'm sorry, for the hardware, I'm going to start with the extra pieces from my Sewology keychain hardware set. Um, I used, I think I used one of these on my faux leather keychains. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and cut some more strips of this and I will be back with you in just a moment. All right, so I have 12 strips of 11 inch webbing cut and the ends have been sealed. Um, I am a little concerned about ghosting with these. I'm not going to pre-press these and I'm pretty sure they're going to shrink a little bit in the heating process. Um, so with that in mind, I am not going to start with the fronts. Um, I have one keychain that I'm going to do that has text on it 
and I don't want any ghosting on that and frankly I don't want ghosting on any of them. So I'm going to start off with the backs of my designs. Um, as I showed you in the Canva design work, um, I have chosen a color out of each print that I'm going to put on the back. Now, while this is fantastic on this particular print, I have this particular print that isn't quite so nice. I mean, I love the patterns that I've chosen here. I think they are going to sublimate beautifully. However, the colors that I picked out of the last two, that's going to be fun. Um, so I'm definitely going to do <laughs> these off camera. Um, another thing I want to point out, I have four sets of pages that I'm going to be doing today. And in order to keep the fronts and the backs together, I cut out little notches on each one that are different. So this one has the corner cut off. I showed you the other one. This one, I have a little notch taken out of the center. And then on this one, I have a notch over here. So this will help me keep track so I know where each one belongs. So I'm going to tuck this one out of the way for the moment and let's go ahead and start on the back. I will bring in my heat resistant tape and let's just get started. Um, if you recall, my designs were printed at 1.1 inch wide, so that will leave me a little bit of room, top and bottom. And my tape, eh, it's a little narrow for this. But I'm just going to line this up in the center and tape it down. And I don't want to pull my webbing, but I do want to make sure that it is pretty much in a straight line. And what I may need to do is I may need to take a much longer piece of tape just to make sure everything stays in place. So I will see how this first one goes with the heat press. And then depending on how that works, I may take an extra piece for the other keychains that I'm making. So I'm going to go ahead and speed through putting the keychains on here and I will be back with you in a minute. Okay, so I have three sheets of keychains ready to go. So I'm going to go ahead and switch the room around, get the heat press started, and we'll be back in just a minute and we'll get these sublimated. All right, we are over here with the HTV Ront Auto heat press. And the temperature we need to sublimate this at is 400 degrees, which is where it's already set from my last project. And we need to heat these for 55 seconds. And then we'll turn on our auto button. And now we will let this heat up. And I'm going to go get some butcher paper ready. And we'll be back in a little bit. All right. We are up to 400 degrees. And I have my butcher paper ready. So let's go ahead and take our first design. And we will have it paper up. You recall from my last video, I had some issues with that. So we'll go ahead and run this through for 55 seconds. All right, we're down to the last few seconds and I'm going to hold my paper down. I like to do that when I'm sublimating if possible. And then we will pull this out. So 
So I do have quite a bit of tape on here. So these colors turned out so pretty. Can you see that? All right, I have all of my wristlet bands sublimated on both sides. And I took some really good pictures that I will put up on the corresponding blog post if you want to hop over there and take a look at each one. Um, I did notice that some of the ends were still fraying. Um, I think you can see that on here. Um, so apparently I didn't heat it long enough. I, I don't know. Um, so I did put some drips fray check on the ends of each one. Let it sit for 25-30 minutes. And now we're ready to move on to the next step. So like my faux leather keychains. I do want to glue these together so that I will have an easier time when it comes to putting the hardware on. So I have my art glitter glue. I think it'll work. I don't know for sure. Um, and I'm just going to put a little line across here. Not a whole lot, just a little bit. And then I will line up my, my fabric. And I'm just going to clip it. So I'm going to go ahead and do this with all of my keychains and let the glue dry a little bit and then I will be back with you again. Okay, I believe our first four are dry enough that we can move on. Um, just in case I am going to leave them clipped. So in order to do this, we do need this pair of pliers. Um, you can purchase this with some of the hardware occasionally on Amazon. Um, you can also find these pliers in Hobby Lobby in the stained glass section. Uh, so what we're going to do is we are going to place our hardware inside like this. And then we're just going to line up our band and we will center it in the middle and then we will start squeezing it. So I'm going to do it on both sides. And then again in the middle. And there we have the first one done. All right, let me go ahead and do another one for you. Now, when I'm putting these in there, I'm putting the teeth towards me so that I'll be able to lay the band against the flat side. And I think that will just be a little bit easier for me. Okay, and I'll do this side, come back over to the other side. And there we go. There's our second keychain. Now, with these, with this set of hardware, the key rings do not come 
already on. So we'll just go ahead and open this up and slide it around. And there we have it. So I'm going to go ahead and finish all these up and I'll come back at the end and I will show you all of the finished wristlet keychains. Okay, so my first batch of sublimated wristlet keychains are done and I think they are all just so beautiful. This polyester webbing from Country Brook Design sublimated beautifully. The colors are bright and vibrant and they are true to color as well. Um, I did have to pick up a, another batch of key fob hardware. Um, I bought this off of Amazon and I will link that below. Um, one thing to note about them is the ring itself is much smaller. Um, if you'll recall, the larger ones are from the Soology uh, key fob hardware set. Um, another thing with the Amazon hardware, it was a little bit harder to squeeze with the pliers. But once I figured out the technique, they turned out just fine. So thank you again so much for joining me today. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and don't forget to hit that notification bell so you know when I put up the next video. Until then, have a great day, you guys. Bye.